All righty. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, <clears throat> big week for, for the Nose. Um, really excited to get back to practice and get ready for Louisville, um, a conference game. Um, we talked on Saturday about our team. I thought our team improved in a lot of areas. Um, last week, uh, by no means, like I said before, we're where we need to be, but we made improvements in the right direction, and uh, we got to continue to build off of that as as we go on the road now and, and get into conference play. Um, it's going to be important that we build off of it and, and try to play consistent winning football. All right, questions? Yeah, Coach, you Willie, in, in 2014, your South Florida offense struggled to run the ball. I think you were like maybe 110th in the nation in running. And then the next year, you were 11th. Can you kind of take us through the transformation there? What happened um, to make you rise so many spots in one year? Um, I think part of it was scheme, just the way we went about doing our scheme. Um, when we changed the offense up, um, it, it gave us, um, from a personnel standpoint, more advantages to what we did. Um, and, and we committed to running the football. And, and guys understood it and, and what we were doing. And, and it, just, it just took off. I think it's in just execution. You execute plays. And we had a, um, a quarterback that ran the ball well, too. So um, more quarterback runs helped as well. But I think more importantly, just had uh, more consistent ex execution. Did you change anything on the offensive line? No. Um, our guys just we made it simple for them and allowed them to go play. And that's been a big part of our offense. I guess uh, to answer your question and just one thing is if we made it simple simple for our guys and um, and didn't ask our guys up front to do too much. And, and they played better. Well, going back to your opening statement, you talked about building on, on what you guys did well on Saturday, I guess. Specifically, what what does that look like? How do you go to to build and reinforce the the good things that you saw? Well, I think um, when you look at the first two series offensively, um, what our guys was able to do and go out and um, put two drives together and, and do it without any mistakes. You know, I thought that was really important that we went down the field and uh, executed our plays consistently throughout the drives and, and came up with touchdowns, uh, which we want to do and to be able to do it uh, back to back was. Was uh, was big for our offense as we gain confidence and, and get better, and then on uh, the third drive uh, we were moving the ball again, and then again we um, stepped on our own toe and fumbled the ball, um, and that's what I mean about being consistent in what we're doing. We need more consistent play, and and and, and then we can't take care. Of, I mean, can't lose the football. So um, as an offense, um, just continue to get better, continue to try to run the football like we've been doing and, 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 and be better at that. Um, but I think more importantly, just consistent um, execution. Um, the more we can have that, the better better we are. I do think uh, we made some improvements. We didn't have any pre-snap alignments, penalties that had been killing us and, and hurting certain drives. So our guys got better at that. I thought in the first um, quarter, we, we were playing discipline, fo discipline winning football. and. And then um, during the second half, we started uh, making some selfish uh, penalties with the lining up off sides and, and false starts. Um, and then, then the penalties we had on our special teams, we just can't have those things. So um, those are things we got to get better at. Um, I thought we threw the ball well. I thought our guys passed protect a lot better than what we did the week before. So uh, let's continue to try to build on that. Coach, after going back and watching the film, where do you think your team made the biggest improvement from the Syracuse game to Northern Illinois? Um, I thought guys, um, they first and foremost, they played for each other. And, and then um, I thought guys were, were, were more locked in to doing their job and not trying to do everybody else's job. And by doing that, we were able to execute a lot better. And um, I thought our guys calmed down a little bit and, and just went out and played football and, and not overthink things. And, and I thought that happened a lot in the Syracuse game. And um, there wasn't as many missed assignments. Coach, with you guys being 2-2 two and two now and looking for your first ACC win, do you think this weekend can kind of be a turning point for you guys for the season? Uh, that's the, um, 
I want to say this weekend, hopefully, um, started last week was the turning point for our guys to get a win back at home um, against Northern Illinois. And, and now it's conference game. We're hoping that we can build off of what we did last week and, and put together a complete ball game, something we hadn't done yet. And um, we're eager to do it. And, and it'll be a perfect time to go on the road and, and to do that up at Louisville, a team that's beat us two years in a row. So uh, we understand it's going to be tough. And, um, but we also know what we're capable of doing, and we hadn't played that way yet, and, and we're looking forward to doing that. When you talked about how you hope last week has, a turn, has been a turning point. Have you seen the players be a little more confident this week after getting that win under their belt? Uh, yeah, I, to be honest with you, I, I saw it before the, the, before the win. Um, just last week, how they came to practice last Sunday after the loss uh, was totally different. And, and then the way they came out and practiced all week was – on um, the way you, you, you're supposed to practice. And, and so I saw it then, and, and then just guys going out and play and, and finding a way to win the ball game and, and saw ourselves get better. I think there's a lot of confidence in our locker room, and, and, but also uh, guys understanding that we're, we're still nowhere where we need to be, and there's a lot of work to be done. Hey, Coach. Um, it, I think in the first half you had 26, 27 rushes, whatever it was, and I think you had uh, – and the passes were about even. Second half, I think you ran it only seven times. What was the philosophy to change uh, to really go away from the pass in the second half? Uh, to go away from the pass? Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Sorry. No, I was talking about you only – I think you only attempted um, seven passes in the second half. I guess that's m what my question was. Well, again, we were trying to establish the run, and we were up. Um, and we want to establish the run and, and, and get better. That's something we said we wanted to do and um, establish an identity. And, and we're trying to establish an identity and, and do the things we said we wanted to do in that game, which was run the football, knowing that running the football would set up some other things for us, especially in the past game. You know, um, I thought in the first half we got more attempts to do things because we were converting on first on third downs, and it provided us more opportunity to have more plays. And, and then they're starting in the sec second half. We didn't convert as well as we did in the first half. So we didn't have as many opportunities that we did in the first half. So I think a lot of that has to do with that, too. Uh, Coach, we talked about how the attitude in practice last week you know, carried over in the field. Now that they had some success and saw that pay off, how was yesterday's practice? Was it you know, the same kind of way and the same type of attitude? Yeah, uh, we, we had a really um, exciting practice yesterday. You guys came out and uh, flew around. And it was good to see, especially after the game and got some bumps and bruises, but no one really complain or anything. Just got out there and, and got the work in and, and made some of the corrections that we needed to make and um, got our conditioning in. And, um, and then we had our, our meal together. I know you guys work on uh, ball security drills, but obviously that's become an issue. It's weird, though, you know, like looking back at your previous teams, like last year, I think you guys had a lot of fumbles, but the two previous years, you, you really didn't. Is that something that comes in streaks, or is that just dedication to fundamentals? Well, it's, it's dedication, and it's, it's a want to. You know, it's, that's a prideful thing, and each individual that, that carried the ball got to have enough pride in himself and, and, and the team to, to take care of that football. Because that football is everybody's dreams, goals, and aspirations within our program and within our fan base and all. We all count on our guys to take care of the ball, and, and that's got to happen. And, and um, and we as coaches got to make sure guys are taken care of it or, or they can't run the football or we can't put the ball in their hand if they're going to continue to put it on the ground. It's got to be that important uh, to this football team and to the players um, that we don't put the ball on the ground. Um, and our guys, like you said, we, we work on it daily. And so um, to me, it all comes back to a want. Uh, got to be a want to. You got to want to take care of the football and not put it on the ground. And if you do, then. Um, you can't play. Go back to Wayne. Coach, it seemed like Everly had a lot of high snaps on um, Saturday. Was it a technical issue with him, or was it just maybe impressing too much? Um, I heard that question after the game about a lot of high snaps, and I don't remember being a lot of high snap. I know that one that got over his head and, and, and cost us, not necessarily it cost us seven. We got three out of it on that drive. Um, that's just. I think it's just one of those things that just happened, you know, uh, for him. I don't think it's necessarily been a, a big issue for us, but um, 
and in that case it was um, because it was critical. We were moving the ball and got down there, and and then again we did something to hurt ourselves. Um, Coach, is there any update on Demarcus Christmas and then also on defense? Um, Leonard Warner, Warner started up, and Mike Linebacker was that health related at all, or was it just a performance thing? Um, I think uh, well with Christmas, um, he'll be back. He'll be playing this week. Um, practice yesterday with us, and then um, with Leonard, um, well, D Jack didn't practice much in the week, and, and Leonard did a great job of, of practice during the week, and, and he did a uh, really good job in the game. You know, I think that's one young man that's that's getting better each and every week, and, and really providing a lot of uh, good energy and good plays for us on, on defense. So. Um, he started in front of DJAC because he, he practiced um, more than DJAC and, and was more ready for it to start that game than he was. Coach, looking back at the film, obviously those first two drives went, I guess, kind of what you would like to see out of the offense. Uh, what was working so well when you went back and looked at the film, those, maybe the rest of the game? And then the second part of my question is, I think you guys have scored only thir three points in the third quarter in four games. Mm -hmm. So is there something else coming out of the locker room that's not clicking? And, and what are you doing to address that? Well, um, I think, I mean, those first two drives is, is exactly what we would like to be as an offense. And we would like to play like that uh, for 60 minutes if we could. You know, and, and I think we'll get more out of our offense if we can do that, play more consistent without stepping in our own way. Um, I think that's what we saw in, in those two drives. We got, got out of our own way, and guys were, and, and, and they made big time plays. Um, guys stepped up and made big time plays in, in that drive. Um, I think um, coming out of halftime, I'm, I mean, you just look throughout the season, we, we, we hadn't played well offensively. I don't think it's necessarily a third quarter thing or anything. We just hadn't played consistently well overall. Um, I think once we start playing consistently well overall, um, we'll score points in the third quarter or any quarter. Um, but that's not going to happen until we play consistently uh, uh, enough. And, and I think as we get more reps and more guys are playing consistently out there, those things will come. Willie, through four games, who's been your best player on defense? Um, a lot of guys. I mean, I couldn't just name one guy. I mean, it's never just one guy. I mean, considering the way our guys have been playing defensively, there's a lot of guys contribute to that. So um, I can't sit here and just sing out one guy. Um, plenty of guys have been playing well each and every week. Kyle Myers has been playing outstanding. Um, Stanford Samuels has been playing well. Marvin. Wilson's been playing well. Demarcus Christmas, when he was in there, he was playing well. Brian Burns, um, D. Jack, I mean, just different guys stepping up and making plays. But I think that's why we're playing well is because uh, a lot of guys are stepping up and making plays for us. And also through four games, you knew Harlan Barnett's reputation, obviously. That's why you hired him. But you hadn't worked with him. Now that you've worked with him through four games, what has impressed you about the way he handles this defense and coaches this defense? Well, uh, I just – like everything he's done so far, not only just with our players, but with the coaching staff um, and just how those guys are, get along and, and work well together. And, and I think it trickles down to our, our players and they see that and how close those guys are. And, um, and, and Harlan does a great job of listening, you know, listening to his coaches and, and um, taking advice, not necessarily doing everything they want him to do, but he, he will listen. And I think that's, that's important and, and helps him tremendously. And, and, just the way the defense is playing is how he said he wanted them to play. And, and, and so that's, that's been great for him to uh, come here and, and, and um, having our guys try to establish an identity of what we want to be defensively. Willie, after the game, you said you saw the offensive line get better. You thought they, they made some improvements. Now, after going back and, and watching film, I guess, what areas did you see improvement in? Uh, who, who impressed? And I guess, did your initial uh, impressions on that line kind well, of stand uh, out? Again, I, um, I thought we played better uh, with techniques and fundamentally. And, and, and when we did that consistently enough, good things happened for us. You know, we still had some hiccups to where uh, we didn't do things really well technique wise or um, a guy panic here and there and and not just trust his assignment trust his rules um, but I thought overall for the most part our guys uh, play a lot better technique wise and, and fundamentally and, and and did their jobs you know and so uh, when you can do those things then you give yourself a chance 
you know. But when you when you're not playing fundamentally or technically sound, and then you you're doing someone else's job and not yours, that's when bad things happen for you. So um, my guys um, um, was more focused up, up front and what they had to do, and, and and played more aggressive than what we had played in the past. How important is it for that group, given all the um, I think it, it's really important when you can do it and you have some success and they show themselves that they can get it done, you know, and not have to listen to uh, anything else about what they can't do. Um, just going out and, and, and executing and showing what you're capable of and then build off of that and then not listen to anything else. Um, our guys know what they're capable of doing. It's just a matter of, of playing together and trusting what you are taught to do. And when you do those things, you give yourself a chance. And then the rest of it just come down to fighting. You got to want it more than the other guy. And so um, um, my guys show that and know that they can get it done. Now it's just being able to go out there and perform that way for 60 minutes and, and doing it consistently. Well, uh, Cole Minshew had a couple of plays where he was alert and, and jumped on fumbles. and. Um, you had another play though on defense where it looked like a guy was maybe trying to scoop and score. How, how do you, how do you teach winning football? And is that a culture thing? Is it a, how, how do you work on that? I think it is a cultural thing. Um, that's something you got to preach and do, demand every single day. It just doesn't happen overnight, you know. And all those moments are teaching moments. And again, um, understanding where you at on the field and the ball on the ground um, as a defender, just get on it and give your offense a chance. Uh, get the ball, and we weren't thinking that way. And um, <clears throat> but that's part of our job as coaches to to demand that every single day, and and every opportunity we see, we got to teach from it. And I think the more we continue to do that, the more our guys will develop those those habits and and understanding of what and what not to do in those certain situations. But that that's that's a cultural thing and something that you gotta you gotta do every single day until our guys understand that just how we go about doing things. Looking at the, the schedule ahead, kind of the importance of carrying forward the offensive production you're able to find, and I guess the recent history against this team, does this weekend feel especially important? Uh, every every weekend, um, every game is very important to us. And um, it's, it's important because it's the next game. It's important because it's the uh, ACC game, a divisional game for us. And it's important because it's a team we haven't beat in two years. So um, it's important for a lot of reasons. We, we, we need to win. and. Uh, we need to go play well in order to win. So, uh, very important game. Every game from this point on is is uh, very important, and and um, our guys understand that and know that we gotta again have another great week of practice and go up there and see if we can uh, play some winning football. Coach, it seems like every game so far you've had at least a few runs that kind of break out a little bit. What do you think is the key to kind of finding that on more of a consistent basis? Uh, trusting your, your techniques and, and, and your assignment. I think um, our guys, some of our backs, got to calm down a little bit and just um, be patient and, and then trust what you've been taught, you know, and not, not hurry everything. I think some of our guys have been rushing some things and they're missing cuts, they're missing holes, and, and then they're getting frustrated behind that. And... Um, I think, again, running the ball like we, we ran last week, eventually some of them are going to pop. But it's not going to pop until we trust our assignments and, and, and where we're supposed to run the ball and, and, and more importantly, understanding who, who the linemen are blocking. You know, when our backs understand who they're blocking, then they can do a great job of setting up the blocks. So um, and a lot of us could just be patient. I think because things hadn't necessarily gone the way we want to when it comes to running. Sometimes we panic and, and trying to do too much, and we just we got to let the game come to us. Coach, um, penalties have proved to be particularly painful on special teams during returns. How do you plan on re addressing this in the future? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, penalties have proved to be particularly painful on special teams during returns. How mm -hmm. do you plan on address addressing this in the future? Uh, well, we just got to keep working on those things that, that's hurting us uh, on special team and, and the one is, is holding um, uh, on punt return. I think all of our our uh, penalties have come off a of punt return, and I know that's something we, we've we been stressing to our, our players about um, getting on the defenders and try to hold them up to, to give uh, DJ Matthews an opportunity to return balls early in the year. We were letting guys down and you're fair catching everything. 
so we wasn't getting any returns. And now our guys are working really hard to try to, to hold guys up to allow him to get catches. We got to do it better technique-wise so we don't get called for holding. You know, so um, again, we got to keep working on that daily in practice and make it go. Those are the things that's, that's getting us this holding. And, um, but we want our guys to hold up to give them a chance. You know, we just got to do it better than what we've been doing it. Coach, can we get an update on Landon Dickerson and Derek Kelly, how they're doing? Is there any time frame of when either or both might be back? Uh, um, Landon's looking good. I mean, he, he ran around yesterday, uh, looked good running around. That was good to see. Um, we'll see how the, this week plays out for him, you know. And, and Derek is um, not close to where we want to be. He's still working to us, so there's no necessarily time frame on him. But I will say Landon is um, doing well. If I gotta say he's probably ahead of schedule to be honest with you, um, and I know he's eager to get back out there to to help his teammates. Uh, Willie, just uh, going to Louisville. Obviously, you have a lot of ties to that part of the country. Uh, I think you and Coach Pimpleton played there. Uh, My wife Western, is from there. Wife's from there. Just yeah. to to go back and coach there, and and what, your your memories from playing there, all that kind of stuff. Is this going to be maybe a cool week for you? Um. I wouldn't say it's going to be a cool week just because of me and my relationship there is another opportunity for our team to go up there and play against uh, a conference uh, foe and, and we'll be excited. Um, again, I'm familiar with Louisville and, and the state of Kentucky and um, to be able to see some familiar face would be nice, always good, but we're going up there for a business trip and to win a ball game and that's the most important thing and the people I know up there and that I'm friends with. I'm sure I have some time in the off season to, to see them and, and spend that time with them then. But um, we're going up there for one for one reason. That's to try to win a ball game. All right, we'll go to Ira for the last one. Uh, Willie, uh, the way uh, Amir Rasul ran late in that game, and the, and, the, and we, you talked about it a little bit after that game, but going back, did you see anything that maybe he could contribute a little bit more than he has, or, or is that still? Well, I think there's a lot of guys that can contribute, but, but it's only one ball, and you got a lot of. Players, and you just got to try to find ways to to get guys the ball. But um, I mean, it's it's only one, and you got a lot of good athletes. So uh, I think we can find plays here and there for him to get in to help us, and um, and not just him. There's other guys too that can do some good things for us. So we can find <coughs> ways to to do that. But uh, we're not just going to do it just to do it for guys. Guys going to earn those those reps, and, and and hopefully they take advantage of it like Amir did when he got an opportunity. Um, in the game to take advantage of it. And I do know when usually you take advantage of opportunities like that in games, um, it, it warrants more reps. So um, I'm sure if he have a great week of practice and keep coming along like he's been, he'll, he'll be out there to help us even more. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. You guys have a great Thanks, rest of the day, if you want to. <coughs>